Today I want to talk about this. What is this? This is the PlayStation TV. And if you've never really heard of what this is, well today is your day to learn about it. If you do know what this is and you've been considering buying one but you're not quite sure if it's worth the money, well I'm going to give you a little bit of insight on it and uh, you can judge for yourself if you think it's worth the money. Obviously I thought it was worth the money because I have one but actually I got mine for free. You see, first off, this thing was not a very big success for Sony, and when it first came out, it was 99 bucks. Or you could buy a bundle that included this, a DualShock 3 controller, and I think it was Lego Movie the Game, uh, for about 150 bucks. However, now, you can find these brand new for about 30 bucks. I got mine from GameStop for 30 bucks, and actually I used uh, some Power Up Rewards points and had some coupons, so I got mine for free. But still, uh, you can find these in GameStop uh, as of this recording today, brand new for 30 bucks if yours has it in stock. But what is it? Is it worth buying? Is it, do I need it in my life? Well, here's what it is. This is basically the exact same thing as this PlayStation Vita, but without the screen. So it has all the guts, all the internals of the PlayStation Vita, just no screen and obviously no controls on it, but it does have built-in Wi-Fi. It also has on the side here, you pop this open, a spot for Vita games. So we have Assassin's Creed Chronicles right here in the side of it, and then on the back of it you have a spot for a PS Vita memory card. You also have USB, networking, HDMI, the power of course, and a power button, but you have Wi-Fi built into it. So let's jump in, let's take a look at it and see what it looks like all booted up. All right, so here is the interface for the PlayStation TV. If it looks familiar, well, it should, because as I said, it has the all the internals of this thing are basically ripped straight out of a PlayStation Vita. Uh, so the interface itself is straight PlayStation Vita. So here we are, uh, just going through some of the things that I have uh, installed on here. And we will go with, let's see, uh, let's take a look at, mm, I think, sorry, sorry, I'm drawing a blank here. I'm, I have like really nothing installed, but uh, as you can see, there's you your web browser, your PlayStation store, friends, messages, party, music, videos, PS4 link, trophies, uh, photos, emails, calendar, uh, settings, Netflix, oh, Netflix, uh, Hulu Plus, Crackle, uh, Final Fantasy X, Final Fantasy IX, all that good stuff. So, uh, Vita games work on this. Uh, Assassin's Creed Chronicles, you've actually have already seen this if you saw the uh, little let's look at that I did on here, but we'll go ahead in. So, you click on the little icon there, it pops up just like it does on the PlayStation Vita. You hit start, and you're in. It starts up just like any PlayStation Vita game would. But that is not what I'm here to show you really, because I'm also going to show you some of the other features that the PlayStation TV has. Which, uh, check this out, we got some PSP games here, so Army of Two, the 40th day. It's a PSP game, but you can download PSP games to this and then play them on your big screen TV. Now you're probably asking, you're saying to yourself right now, big whoop, the PlayStation Portable already has TV out. Yes, it does. However, you're going to see a difference if you've ever used the PlayStation Portable TV out or you've seen any of the uh, videos that I've done that I've captured uh, PlayStation Portable games and that big difference is you have sound. Oh, whoa, whoa, hold on, I got some double sound going here that the microphone is probably picking up. Uh, you have full screen. So when you do use the TV out on the PlayStation Portable, it basically letterboxes it and you have black borders around the entire thing. When you do it through the PlayStation Vita, you can see here it's a full screen game. There's no borders, there's no nothing. Why I don't use this for my PSP capturing, uh, I have no idea. But still, I'll show you what this looks like. Loads completed, campaign, resume game. I'm a uh, army of two fan yeah, I guess you could say fanatic. Uh, I don't really see much wrong with these games. The third one, even though it's probably the weakest of the series, I still really liked. And the PlayStation Portable game of it is decent hey guys, as well. I Let's skip all this. Skip all this. Skip all this. So here we are. And the great thing about the PlayStation Portable is that... I'm sorry, the uh, PlayStation TV and the PlayStation Vita is that you can map your buttons. So... See if I can get this in here. Da, da, da. This should be in here somewhere. Use pointer games, controller number, da, da, da. Right, settings, right stick. So 
what you can do is you can set the right stick to control your face buttons, which is how I have it set on my PlayStation Vita as well. So any twin stick uh, games, like so basically this, instead of using the face buttons to shoot in different directions, I can just use the, uh, the right analog stick to do that. It also helps a lot in games such as uh, Gun for the PSP and other games uh, that use the face buttons as a camera. You can actually twin stick control and it helps out a lot on the uh, PlayStation TV as well. And let's see, do I have any of those downloaded? Do I? Oh, I don't I don't have Gun on here, sorry. But there's Final Fantasy IX. And then uh, PlayStation 1 games that you can download on here also work. So here's Final Fantasy IX, or PlayStation 1 game. This works as well. Hint, if you press and hold the PS button when you play, yada, yada, yada. Let's go. Ah, the old PlayStation logo. And it looks really good up res to HD. There we go. Final Fantasy Nines. So here we are playing Final Fantasy IX through the PlayStation uh, TV with a DualShock 3 controller on an HD TV, and it looks awesome. Obviously, you can do this on the PlayStation 3, you can do this on the PlayStation 2, the PlayStation Vita, you can play these on the PlayStation Portable. It's just an extra thing that just about all Sony devices can do, but it's still an extra feature that you can do with this, which is kind of cool. The other thing you can do with this, which is nice, is just like on the PlayStation um, Vita, you have PS4 Remote Play. And let's see if we can get this thing to work. My PS4 is currently uh, on standby, so we should be able to locate it. Uh, I just heard it cut on downstairs. So while PlayStation or while Remote Play on the PlayStation Vita uh, works really well, sometimes you just want to sit down and uh, play the PlayStation 4 on a TV as well if somebody has that TV tied up. So with the PlayStation TV, ah, uh, what? Let's try this again. Yeah, so the Wi-Fi signal where I have my PlayStation TV isn't the best. Uh, but um, if you get it somewhere that works great, you can hook up either a PlayStation or a DualShock 3 or a DualShock 4 controller to it. And if you use a DualShock 4 controller, you get an experience that's just like playing on the PlayStation 4. Let's try this again. It will work. I promise you that. Come on, work, 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 work. I feel like Rihanna up in here. I hate that song, by the way. Come on. Get that Wi-Fi signal. I'm currently waving my PlayStation TV in the air trying to get the Wi-Fi signal to work. Ah. Boo. Okay, so apparently I cannot show you the remote play. That's bumpy. Hold on, let's, let's, let's give this one more shot. Let's cut you off. PS4 link. Start you back up. I know you work because I was playing Fallout 4 on you uh, a couple months ago. Yeah! Success! So here we are. Here's my, uh, my PlayStation 4. Got some Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles going on. So you got some Knights of oh, Knights of Azure. That's actually a uh, that's a pretty decent game. Doom, Knack, Trop you know, I don't care what you say. That's a good game. Tropico 5, NHL, Uncharted, Dark Souls, Project Car. So there we go. Let's uh, open some turtles. No, not leaderboard. So there's a little bit of a lag going on because the, the Wi-Fi signal for my PlayStation TV is, is a little weak. So, but as you can see, uh, it remote play does work through the PlayStation TV, and depending on your internet connect or your network connection, it's going to be better than others. Uh, 
preferably if your house is wired for Ethernet, you'll have a great uh, experience. Um, mine, of course, is, is not. I gotta go through Wi-Fi, so the experience is uh, less than optimal. But, let me uh, put this uh, thing back into arrest mode, and then you'll see that it kinda shuts off. Yeah, of course it has. Close this out. And there you go, there's some of the cool things you can do with uh, with PlayStation TV. So again, you got Hulu, you got Crackle, you got uh, PS1 games, PSP games, you got Vita games that you can play on here, all on your TV, and honestly, it looks great. Even the upscaled PSP games, I think, look really good. So all this sounds amazing, right? You can play this whole catalog of Vita games, PSP games, PlayStation 1 games, and other things available on the Vita, all for an entry price of 30 bucks, plus you know whatever DualShock controller you have lying around, be it the DualShock 3 or the DualShock 4, they're both compatible with this. Why on earth would you buy a Vita unless you want to play the games on the go? Here is why you would spend 150 or more dollars on the Vita instead of the PlayStation TV if your goal is just to play games. This is not compatible with every PlayStation Vita game because when you lose the touchscreen and you lose the camera, you also lose the functionality that a lot of games have um, in order to play them. So, for example, Uncharted Golden Abyss. You need the front touchscreen, you need the rear touch pad, and you also need the camera that's built into it for a lot of uh, different things. This, uh, Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation, same deal. You need to have the, uh, the camera for that as well as the touchscreen. And there's a couple other games that you just can't play on here. Here's the catch though. This doesn't tell you that until you actually install the game. Uh, for example, uh, Borderlands, I'm not, sorry, not Borderlands, uh, let's, let's do Uncharted Golden Abyss. So I bought Uncharted Golden Abyss, bought uh, through the PlayStation Store when it was a freebie for PlayStation Plus subscribers. I downloaded it to my PS3 system. And then when I got this, I downloaded it to this. It let me do it. It let me download this game uh, to this system. Uh, even though it doesn't work on it. When you go to play it, a big screen pops up and says this is not compatible with PlayStation TV. Uh, the good thing is the PlayStation Store on here only allows you to actually purchase games that are compatible with this, but if you've purchased games prior, let's say for the Vita, it will let you download and install them to this system. It doesn't recognize that it's a, a game that's not compatible. It'll let you go through the download process, and if you have a slow internet connection, you're talking about this could take hours. You could spend hours downloading something that you've paid for but you can't play on here. Uh, Netflix is also, as of the, right now, not compatible with this. It used to be, but Netflix is not compatible. Hulu is, Crackle is, if you want to be the one or two people that actually use that, but Netflix isn't, but sure enough, you can download it to the system. So you want to be careful with this. Uh, research what's compatible with it before you spend the money to buy it, because while this will block out purchases that are compatible with it, you can still make purchases through other means, through their website, through the PlayStation Vita, or even through, let's say, like your PlayStation 3 or PlayStation 4. Uh, you can purchase things and then try to access it on this, and it's not compatible. So that's a big drawback. While it is compatible with the Vita games technically, because you can pop them in here, there's only a few that are available. And you can Google search uh, on the internet uh, the compatibility list and see if there's a game that you can play on here um, to make sure you're not gonna, gonna waste your money. Because uh, if you go buy a physical copy of a game and pop it in here, a lot of times you can't return it. So that's another drawback is let's say you go to Best Buy or Walmart or somewhere, you buy a physical copy of a game and you're like, man, I'm going to go play this on the Vita TV, or excuse me, my PlayStation TV. It's called Vita TV in other countries. Uh, you pop it in and you can't, and then you can't return it, so now you're stuck with a game you can't play. So if you get one of these as your only way of playing this library of games, make sure you go on Google or somewhere and find the compatibility list, and I'll have uh, one in the link description below. Uh, make sure you have the compatibility list for this so you don't go spend your money on a game that you can't actually play on the system. But when it comes to PS1 games or PlayStation Portable games that you can download to play on this, well, you can play them. It's great. You can play all of them. It's awesome because they only need the controller. Uh, so would I recommend you buy one? Hell yes, I would for 30 bucks if you can find it for that cheap or do like I did, get some power up rewards points, about 30 bucks worth of coupons and go buy and get it for free. Uh, the other thing is this allows me to capture Vita games. So every Vita game that I have actual good footage of has been captured off of this. Now there's some tricks to doing that. Uh, you do need to go buy an HDMI splitter to get around the HDMI or HDCP copy protection. But if you get HDMI splitter, you can then 
just plug this into the splitter and then an HDMI cable from the splitter to your capture device, everything is good to go. But yeah, for 30 bucks, it's awesome. And even though Netflix isn't compatible with it, you still have Hulu, you still have Crackle, you still have YouTube, so you can still watch uh, some shows and other things uh, on this through the TV, but even still for 30 bucks, um, you know, plus the price of a memory card um, and the price of the games that are compatible with it. I think it's awesome and the games look great. I'm playing this and it's just up in my office where I have a uh, first generation Samsung Plasma TV. So it's a 42 inch 720p TV, which is still a higher resolution than what the native games are in this and they look great. The, uh, the games blown up to uh, HD look phenomenal. So yeah, I would recommend that you buy one of these. Just make sure you do your research before you purchase any software for it. So that is your PlayStation TV. Just a quick look at it, what it is, and if you should buy one. Uh, let me know what you thought. Uh, let me know if you have one. Do you like it? And uh, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.